Uh, then again, LeBron was also the first player to average a triple-double over the course of an NBA Finals. At 32 now, where does he stand in, the, in terms of his personal career curve? You know, it, he had a fantastic year at 32. Um, and I think the one thing is he understands how to rest and have his body rejuvenated for this entire season. He understands the longevity of the seasons. I think for him is... Uh, he could stay at this level if he started to add some things. I think for him is a post-up game where he can score easier without exerting so much energy to being able to score. I think also the free throw line. Right. If he can get add 10 percentage points. At his worst season from points, the line. That gives him two or three more points. And I know it's not all about points for him. And then I think that for him is um, how much does he want to play the power forward position throughout the year? There's some wear and tear on that defensively and rebounding, but also I think offensively it'll be a little bit easier playing a four spot, having fours trying to keep up with him. So I think for him is he could stay right here, but he has to, a lot of work to do individually. I think so much of what LeBron has done in, in team building over the years has been about adding veteran pieces to his team. He's got Kyrie now, but he needs another younger catalyst to play with. He needs somebody else younger than him that can allow him to get off the ball, not have to facilitate as much, not have the pressure of guarding the other team's best perimeter player on a consistent basis if he really wants to stretch this out a few years. I think LeBron needs another younger counterpart, somebody else to help you know, facilitate that process. Not that he's transitioning into some role player you know, spot, on a team, but just somebody else to, to, that allows him three, four minutes a game where it's not all on his shoulders. You saw what it was like when the Cavaliers played without him on the floor in the finals. Right. The bottom fell out every time he went to the bench. I mean, he's got to have somebody else that could be out there that takes that pressure off of him. And I think that's in the form of a younger, up and coming star player. Strange now you think about it. They traded Kevin Love, you know, for Kevin Love by moving Wiggins before he ever played a second with LeBron. Right. You'd be curious to see what Andrew Wiggins would look like next to LeBron now and maybe his 34th year. And, of course, LeBron asked for as much back in yes. January when he said we right. need another playmaker on this team. As it stands, the Cavs roster is not the most flexible. Cleveland had the highest payroll in the league last season, and none of their seven highest paid players is a free agent this summer. That can work both ways, good and bad. So are we looking at a major overall here or small tweaks to a team that has won the East three straight years? Well, that's so good in the Eastern Conference that, you know, it's hard to look at it if you're David Griffin and the Cavaliers and say, let's, let's take a stick of dynamite to this thing and start all over. I mean, you could win the East with this group absolutely for the next couple years. You're that good in Eastern Conference. You're probably that good against most every other team in the Western Conference. There's only one team <laughs> where this roster does not work, and we've seen it. The, the Warriors could be working on, a, on three straight championships had they not given up that 3-1 last year. So you have to be very careful not to look beyond all of the success you have in Eastern Conference and perhaps against the rest of the league and just stare at the Warriors. you got to be thinking, to me, broader than just the Warriors. That's, that's the end goal. But, there, but there's a lot more basketball to be played before you ever get to them. Of course, the other issue for David Griffin, who, by the way, still doesn't have a, a deal to stay right. in Cleveland beyond this month, uh, is that LeBron James' contract is up next summer. He'll be 33 next summer. The clock is ticking there on whatever that window of opportunity is in Cleveland. This is also a consideration. There's not a lot of development going on right now. It's win. Yeah, it is. And I, I'm with Sekou. I think um, you can't just try to build your team to beat the Golden State Warriors. This team is built to beat everybody else but except the Golden State Warriors. So I think you still have to go with that. I think it has to be small tweaks. I think they, just like Sekou said, I think they have to get younger. They have some veterans on the end of the bench, and no disrespect, those guys, I think you have to find some younger legs, some activity, guys that can get out and get some easy buckets, come up with some steals, some things that LeBron doesn't have to do. And I think for them is... They might have even plucked somebody off the Warriors, like a JaVale McGee. I mm. think that fits for them. I think they needed some more rim protection, and I think JaVale McGee might be one of those guys that you might try to steal from the Warriors. It'll be second straight year. Remember, they signed yes. Andrew Bogut, and obviously that backfired when Bogut got hurt. Well, good thing for us, the basketball world in general is very, <laughs> very helpful with suggestions and speculation <laughs> about how to remake the roster. Let's get into some of the possibilities, whether realistic or not, whether the other teams in the league would cooperate with these right. deals. I don't know, but we'll throw out the names. Paul George, how much sense does he make in Cleveland? 
Yeah, as a player, Paul George's game fits pretty much everywhere because he's, he can do pretty much everything. Will it make them better? I'm not sure because a lot of Paul George's, he needs to be a facilitator. He will definitely be playing off the basketball with Kyrie and LeBron James. Is he a fantastic defender? Another guy like Sekou said to be able to guard a Kevin Durant, give off some pressure, yes, but I wouldn't say Paul George is the answer for the Cleveland Cavaliers. I'm a big Paul George fan. I don't think that takes them to the next level. Hmm. Be a, an upgrade defensively over presumably whatever they had to send back, but it would also force LeBron to play for most of the season. That and, and you wonder what would you have to give up to get a Paul George? Right. If you got to give up Kevin Love, and I, and I love how people say, well, you know, you, you package Kevin Love with this and trade him. You don't beat the Warriors by moving Kevin Love. You got to try and beat the Warriors by adding something to LeBron, Kyrie, and Kevin Love. Paul George would be a fantastic fit to me, though, if you, if you think about just the breakdown of that talent and how it matches up against the Warriors' first yes. four players. It's an, it's an ideal matchup. You could play 4-on-4 four four half the time and nobody would mind. But I think too much of what you're trying to do would require you to give up key pieces. And I'm talking about Kevin Love, if he's the starting point for a deal that you're trying to make, is a very dangerous proposition for the Cleveland Cavaliers because you got to remember what you gave up to get Kevin Love. Mm -hmm. You gave up a number one pick in a draft. If you moved love now for something less than the value of that number one pick. It's really tough to see how you're getting what you need if you're Cleveland. That goes back to the short-term thinking, especially with Paul George being a free agent next summer. They're trying to win right now mm -hmm. and try to assemble a team that presumably could uh, compete with and beat the Warriors next right. season. What about the idea of trying to get bigger against the Warriors, who are the great small ball team of our time and probably ever? Well, I think if you get bigger, it has to be a big that can dominate offensively, that can automatically draw a double team, a, a big that can shoot the basketball, also facilitate. And there's only one big in mind to me, and that's DeMarcus Cousins. I think he's the one guy, if you look at those numbers, he will cause a problem when the game slows up to make the Warriors. And I know on, all, on the defensive side, it'd be hard, but it, I, he, there's no KD and Draymond and Iguodala playing small ball versus him. They might hit three, but he's going to score two and a foul and wear you down. So that's the one guy, I think, that definitely could be a changer and it'd be a different look with LeBron James. It's an interesting I, thought. I'd just be curious to see how long he lasts getting up and down the floor at the Warriors' pace. If LeBron and Kyrie and J.R. Smith and these guys couldn't keep up the pace, DeMarcus is going to need oxygen. He's going to need a, He's going to have to have an oxygen tank strapped to his back trying to play that pace. It is an interesting idea, though, trying to force the Warriors to stay bigger than they would normally like. For yeah, sure. could, How about that's the one thing about when you post up, it slows down the pace. Right. And I think when you start to double team and you start going foul, foul, foul to free throw line, that's the only way you can right. slow a pace to have a chance. Right. How about uh, another member of the uh, famous banana boat getting together with uh, <laughs> with uh, LeBron in Cleveland, Carmelo Anthony, who has the no trade clause, but you know maybe he'd be willing to work something out to play with LeBron. The thing I love about Carmelo and the idea of him being a part of a team with LeBron is we've seen it in action. We've seen how well Carmelo blends in an, in a conglomerate. When he's played on those Olympic teams, those international teams, when he's not had to be the main guy, not right. the guy with the ball in his hands, not the guy always making plays, facilitating, running everything through him, he's unbelievably effective because he's a spot-up shooter. He doesn't need to pound the rock to be effective. And he rebounds and defends a lot better in those situations than we've seen him necessarily with the Knicks. Again, he'd be another guy that I need in addition to the right. stars I already have. Right. And that makes it more difficult to figure out how you get him. He was a lethal catch-and-shoot guy with the U.S. Yes. Olympic team over the years.